Hi, my name is Autumn, and today I'll be showing you how to make your own native terrariums. Terrariums are a great way to bring a little piece of nature into your home that is low maintenance and fun to create and watch grow. The suffix arium refers to a place where things are kept, so you may have also heard of common ariums like an aquarium, which is for aquatic organisms, a herbarium, which is a collection of plants, and even an aviary, which is an enclosure for birds. Subsequently, a vivarium is the same thing as a terrarium, except an animal element is incorporated, such as springtails, which are little bugs who aid in decomposition, or snails and slugs who are fun to watch and add another interactive element to an enclosure. I mostly have vivariums because I enjoy adding worms and isopods like roly-polies, um, however we will not be adding any bugs. I will be going over how to layer and build your native terrarium. But to start, here is a list of the things you'll need. You'll need a large plastic or glass container. Uh, a mason jar works perfectly for this. You'll need some rocks so you find outside, um, a plastic bag and a pair of scissors, dirt from your yard, garden, or local forest, some small plants like moss and grass that you'll also find from outside, and then some uh, pond or tap water also works. Picking the right container for your terrarium is an important first step. You'll want something with a sealing lid and preferably glass, um, glass being more durable and having a better temperature regulation. Mason jars work perfectly for terrariums and can easily be picked up for cheap at thrift stores or at hobby stores. Uh, personally, I have a small collection of assorted jars I keep around and I usually choose from these. Most of these I find for cheap through Goodwill or yard sales. Here I will be using a medium-sized mason jar with a plastic lid. I'm going to walk you through the layers of the terrarium we will be including. Each layer has an important role to play. When creating terrariums, we are recreating a natural system so that the life within your container continues to thrive naturally. These systems are ones we see in our everyday but may not always pay attention to. Um, most importantly is the water cycle which we will also need to recreate within these terrariums. So the water cycle includes evaporation, where water droplets rise due to heat, condensation, where the water droplets form together, and precipitation, where the water droplets become so heavy that they fall. In a closed terrarium, uh, we will add water, which will evaporate as the container heats, condensate on the lid and the surfaces of the jar, and then precipitate when the container cools. So this will mimic a natural rain cycle. However, we also need to include an artificial filtration system which keeps the water clean as it goes through these cycles. So we do this by layering materials. So the first thing I do is go outside and collect all my materials. For collecting, I usually put uh, the items in a recycled plastic container for carrying, although you can use any sort of container to do this. Um, I treat this as an opportunity to explore and learn more about the native wildlife, often going on little walks or hikes in order to collect what I need. However, for this I'm collecting just from around my house. I collect rocks and stones from the road. Um, nothing special, but this is the size that I need to fill my container. For soil, I like to use a mixture of dirt from my yard and nearby wildlife area. This just increases the complexity of your soil, meaning there is more nutrients for the plant in your terrarium to thrive off of. As I'm walking, I'll also pick up some sticks, some pretty rocks, and other decorations I would like to include. This can be practically anything you find visually appealing. Um, some people really take advantage of this and find some pretty cool stuff. Finally, I'll collect my plants. Plants you include in your native terrarium can be pretty much anything you find outside including mosses, grasses, weeds, ferns, and so on, um, as long as they fit inside your jar. However, it's important to remember not to be disruptive when taking plants, and only take what you'll use. I really enjoy adding moss as a base layer to my terrariums, however, I make sure that I only collect as much as I need to fill the bottom and don't overtake the moss. The best way to collect moss is to get small samples from the middle of a clump of moss, to limit disturbance and enable it to quickly regrow. For this terrarium, I have collected some common hair cap moss, some sphagnum moss, um, common yarrow, and some small ferns. 
If you are curious what species you're adding to your terrarium, I highly encourage using a website or there's also an app called iNaturalist. It's a great way to get uh, started in learning what sort of wildlife is in your, in your backyard. Just upload a picture and iNaturalist will recommend what species you've collected. It's super simple and uh, really easy to use. Guidebooks are also a great resource to use when looking up uh, your local wildlife. Uh, this works not only for just plants, but also birds and insects. Um, whenever I go out, I'm always listening to bird songs to see who's a, a local resident in my area. And I'm always on the search for little critters to learn more about. So our first terrarium layer will be the rocks. Um, adding rocks acts like a little reservoir at the bottom of your container uh, where the water can sit without touching the soil. If you want to add another element of cleaning to your jar, you can also put a thin layer of small rocks on top of a layer of larger rocks. This just increases filtration, but it's not necessary. Second, we will put a layer of plastic to separate the soil from the rocks. To do this, I like to use a piece of plastic bag or plastic wrap, preferably recycled. As you'll see here, I'm using a sandwich bag. You'll want to measure the shape of your jar onto the plastic with a marker, and then cut it out. You'll then want to poke a bunch of drainage holes into the plastic. Here I'm using a sharp pencil, but any poking element will do. Having a piece of cardboard or styrofoam to poke into is helpful, but again, it's not really necessary. As you can see here, I'm just poking into the air, basically. When you finish this, you can put the layer of plastic into your container on top of the rocks. Um, you can always trim off a little bit of plastic if it doesn't fit correctly. Um, and make sure that the plastic covers as much of the surface as possible. From here, you can then add your layer of soil. Make this layer fairly thick, but this layer is subjective depending on the size of your terrarium. You can see here I'm adding just about an inch of soil going around the edges and compacting it a little bit as I go. This just kind of increases the density of the soil, uh, makes it so you can fit a little bit more in there and also gives more compact soil for the plants and mosses to grow in. So finally is the fun layer of your terrarium. This includes the plants that you've collected and your decorations. You can add your plants in any way you want. Uh, some people get really creative with this step and make little stone pathways or even arches. I've seen some pretty crazy terrarium designs before. This layer is technically called a hardscape, which is a term that's also used when creating fish tank setups. I'll also be adding a layer of moss and then putting my plants in between. Uh, you'll see here that I put the big different clumps of moss on the outside so that they're touching um, base to base, kind of to fill the bottom. I'll also add these fun little rocks and acorn caps that I found. You can really have fun with this part. This is the the part that you'll be seeing um, all the time. It's the part that you're going to be watching the most and interacting with. Finally, when you have everything set up as you want, um, just pour a little bit of water into your terrarium. You can also use a spray bottle. This works as well. Um, here I'm using well water. Filtered, unchlorinated water is best. You can even pour a little bit of water from a local pond or stream, which only increases the helpful bacteria, and you know that it won't be harmful because there's no chlorine. When everything is as you want it, simply put the lid on your jar and seal it, and you have finished your native terrarium. These terrariums require little attention, just make sure to put them in indirect sunlight. Um, if you ever notice that there's too much water, you can leave the lid off for a little bit, let it evaporate into the air, and then reseal it. 
Um, this will limit mold growth if there's uh, too much moisture. If you don't think you added enough water, you can always just add more. There's no harm in this at all. Once you start getting really comfortable making terrariums, maybe you've made a couple, uh, tried uh, some different techniques and you know how to layer, you can really start branching out to try new things. There's a ton of different other layers that you can add, such as activated charcoal, um, different soil layers, and tons of different plants that you can include. Also experimenting with different size jars is really fun. I have a couple that I've made that are in two gallon pickle jars, which are massive and super cool, um, as well as some people make micro terrariums, which are very tiny terrariums. So there you have it. Have fun with these terrariums. Get out in nature, um, learn more about your local wildlife, and I hope you enjoyed making these native terrariums with me.